Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and we are doing what's in store for September. It's a beautiful day out here. Um, it's going to get warmer, but we've had some cooler nights. So a lot of things are changing in the plant world and it's always neat when we start to get those cooler temperatures at night. Some of the pigments come out into the flowers and make colors just more rich and, and beautiful out there. Uh, right now I wanted to show you this great chrysanthemum. This is a true perennial chrysanthemum. And I know a lot of us have been talking about fall mums and the hardiness of fall mums. And, and folks, I'm gonna tell you, always try to plant your fall mums early, as early as you can in the season, just so that they can get established. Sometimes it takes six to eight weeks to get uh, fall mums establish those roots rooted into the soil and so that helps them return a little bit better for you. Winter protective mulch in November is also a really good thing to, to use around them. Um, but this chrysanthemum right here is Mammoth. And Mammoth series is actually a daisy chrysanthemum, as you can tell with the yellow centers. And um, with these, you'll they'll come in this color which is like a violet lavender there's also a coral orange there's a yellow as well and um, they are true hardy chrysanthemums so they should have good longevity in the garden you can cut them back use them for cut flowers and um, they can get taller so right now in their pots we've really cut them back so they're very nice and compact these can grow taller in the landscape so we kind of talk about pinching your mums back by the 4th of July. And I tend to do two pinches, uh, usually in May, pinching half that new growth back. And then again in July, pinching it half back again. And guess what? You get a nice compact mum. Of course, they look great with the grasses. This is Penicetum Little Bunny. I've got Veronica. Veronica is probably on its second or third flush. This is Dark Veronique, that dark blue. So it's really pretty combined with that. But I wanted to show you this little guy. Um, this is an Arborvitae called Whipcord. Isn't it the cutest thing ever? I absolutely love it. It's really all about that texture of the foliage and these little whips are just a bunch of arborvitae needles if you will or leaves modified leaves but look at that habit it's just the coolest thing ever stays nice and small it's a nice little evergreen for you um, out there for sunny part shady spots um, i just think it's so cool this time of year the comb flowers are growing like gangbusters and blooming and you've got to see all the different colors out there comb flowers are just uh, so different from what they were 10, 20 years ago. And um, this is a beautiful compact type. This is called Pow Wow Wild Berry. It is a single cone flower, has those great uh, seed heads on it. So they're a uh, natural bird feeder. Uh, the goldfinches absolutely love them. Those bright pinky purple uh, petals are awesome as well. And that really only grows to about, I'd say about 18 inches in the garden. So if you're looking for a shorter cone flower, beautiful type. Of course, this is great for your pollinators. So any of your pollinators, your bees, your butterflies, um, definitely will come to this guy and um, really just with the cone flowers now you want to cut them and make sure you're cutting back those stems so you get more buds and more blooms underneath don't be afraid to cut those plants back and deadhead them so they produce more for you it's combined with this agasaki um, sometimes called hummingbird mint oh gosh aesop all different kinds of things but this is in the mint family and we we absolutely love it um, this is a yellow color so i think this is kudos yellow sorry i'm looking really quick yeah kudos yellow so this is a shorter variety um, probably only about 12 inches in the garden um, our co-worker karen over at strongsville uh, she loves it she's growing it in her garden and absolutely loves it um, but she also grows the taller blue fortune types and the black adder variety and um, loves the yellow just as much so try them together it's a great combo for the pollinators a little bit further down i wanted to show you this um, cone flower here this is red ombre it's artisan red ombre and oop, we got a we got a little bumblebee here and he's going through and collecting some nectar and some pollen but check out the color on this it's really really changing 
from kind of a deep red coral and then it moves into an orange. So looks gorgeous. Combined with the butterfly bush, this is Buzz Hot Raspberry. Buzz is a little bit shorter variety, very, very compact in the garden, usually about two to three foot tall and wide, um, but really, really fragrant. You're, you were really picking up a lot, a lot of scent here uh, next to them and, and absolutely gorgeous together. We're talking about uh, pollinators again, and then September, it's really good to think about planting your gardens and um, adding some good pollinator attractant plants uh, this is Joe Pieweed or Eupatorium. This is a flowering variety called Little Joe and Little Joe is pretty darn compact. We're looking at about 24 inches on these uh, plants right here. Beautiful sort of wispy, mauvey cluster of flowers, but pollinators are, are running all through here. So we've got a lot of buzz going on here. But again, when we're talking about pollinator plants, um, keystone plants, the, the uh, I just lost it. Joe Pye weed, um, your uh, Helianthus family, your Black Eyed Susan family, your Goldenrod family, your Aster family. All those are great plants to grow in the garden and, and considered, you know, more keystone plants, really bringing a lot of different pollinators. So it's really a good time to obviously add some late summer fall color to the garden and get these perennials established before we get some really cold weather out there. But again, you're doing a service for the pollinators so they can come in, you know, uh, absorb as much energy as they can, nectar, pollen, and just keep on working away for us. Uh, we have Viet's Little Susie. This is a beautiful small flowered black eyed Susan. Again, great pollinator plant, as I was mentioning. And remember, I was talking about that yellow Agastaki before. This is black adder. And black adder is really more blue in color, obviously, but it has some really dark purple bracts on it at the base of those flowers. So that's where it gets its name. These are a little bit taller, obviously. You're looking at closer about 30 inches tall with the, the black adder, but again, great hummingbird mint, pollinator attractant, awesome combination. Love those two together. Classic plant for fall is definitely the sedum or upright stone crop. And this is Autumn Joy. And this was perennial plant of the year so many years ago, I, I can't even tell you, but um, great upright plant, lots and lots of color and texture here with the sedum. And that's why we always like to plant them in the garden, especially in those drier, hotter, more um, abused areas, I guess, that we don't get around to caring for a lot. Um, they do so well for us. And again, late season, they're always loaded with pollinators. So um, this is a great plan again for that late season color. I've also seen a lot of the sedum being used in um, bouquets, uh, especially for fall weddings. They're really gorgeous. And there's so many different types of sedum, short ground cover types all the way up to the tall stone crop type. So uh, definitely a lot to choose from out there. Uh, this is your classic pink, obviously. So autumn joy. And then look at this one. So that dark foliage, dark flowering, um, a little bit darker pink. It's really kind of drying to that sort of um, burgundy color, believe it or not. That's called Back and Black. That's a new one from Proven Winners. September is a great time to look at all the different hydrangeas too. And in fact, we didn't have a lot of the smooth type of hydrangea early on in the season, but they really are starting to flush out and look absolutely gorgeous at this time. This is actually Incredible Blush. Incredible Blush, as you can tell, has fairly large flowers. The smooth type of hydrangea, again, are native to the US. So this is a great plant, very easy care. Again, we like to grow it in that four to six hours of direct sunlight. But if you put them in a little bit more sun, not a problem, they can usually tolerate that. Might have to increase watering a little bit more. But other than that, they're going to really produce those large blush pink flowers and just do very, very well for you. Right in front is Little Lime Punch. It's just starting, as I mentioned before, those cooler temperatures at night really make some of the color, that pigment really start to show on this. So Little Lime Punch is gonna continue to change from that limey, creamy color and just start to really get pinker and pinker as we go through the season. 
all these combine very well with the spirea. So the spirea up front is actually double play doozy. It is a proven winner spirea, as is Incredible Blush, as is Little Lime Punch. And uh, the double play series of spirea, wow, they have so much going on for them. Really beautiful early season foliage color. So it's usually a, a red or burgundy or purple. Really neat. As they fill out, they become a, a very nice, clean bush. And then you'll see that some of the flowering here with double play juicy, it's a deep, deep fuchsia color. And then the tips of the foliage are really starting to change here. They have a little bit of copper, a little bit of burgundy, a little bit of pink. So really pretty plant. We're by the viburnum and check this out. This is an arrowwood type viburnum. So you're looking at long straight stems, uh, typically about, I'd say eight foot tall, average, can be eight foot wide. Viburnums do so many services for us out in the garden because we can plant them in full sun to pretty much full shade and they'll do what they're supposed to do. They can provide us with privacy. They can provide us with berries for the birds and check out the fall color. Now, not all viburnums have vibrant changes, but we're really noticing it in the arrowwood right now. So the fall color change, the berries, and of course you always get beautiful flowers in the springtime as well. So uh, viburnum's always a great choice. Check out all the different varieties. Um, Brandywine is starting to change, which is right next door to me. Blue Muffin is another arrowwood that is very similar to uh, Chicago Luster, which is this one. Um, we have a double file right next door that's bringing on some really pretty rust color, um, which is Shasta, I believe. And then I also have some snowball viburnums that are bringing on, again, like a russet red really pretty so again look for viburnums out there they they cover so many or i should say check off so many boxes in the landscape they're just such great plants to grow for us i always have to mention you know trees planting at this time of year fall is a great time to plant and so if you're thinking about doing um, maybe a small ornamental tree or maybe a taller shade tree um, I always want to plug the maples and the oaks and the reason being again I was talking about keystone plants earlier for the pollinators maples and oaks really support a lot of different wildlife if you will and um, insects including pollinators so again keep that in mind when you're looking for some some trees shade trees or smaller ornamental trees i have emperor one here this is a beautiful japanese maple uh beautiful burgundy palmate foliage and then of course we'll really only get to be about 20 foot tall kind of slow growing beautiful burgundy branches and trunks as well Behind me, of course, is the taller Royal Red Norway Maple. And what's really neat about this one is that it has bright burgundy foliage, a little bit brighter than the standard Crimson King that you see out there and very slow growing. So this one, again, will not get huge right away, has a nice kind of slower habit, still a larger tree for a shadier area away from the house, folks. Don't plant that one close to the house, okay? This one over this side is actually Brandywine Maple, and it is a red maple. It grows to about, I would say about 35 to 40 foot, typically around in this area. But what's great about Brandywine is it's seedless. It's actually a male variety, does not produce the helicopter. So if you're kind of sick of picking up helicopters and those types of things, maybe you should consider Brandywine Maple. Taylor's happy, we're in a nice shady spot. And of course I mentioned oak trees. So if you are looking for a shade tree, oaks have so many benefits, again, for wildlife and, and pollinator opportunities. They really are a fantastic tree to grow in our area. And yes, um, they do produce acorns, but um, again, it's one of those things that really helps out the environment. Um, shade trees are always gonna be beneficial and planting at this time of year are gonna root in very, very well. And of course, provide shade uh, for your yard, your garden, your home. And sometimes when you can plant shade trees on a Southern or Western side of the house, it will help 
um, again, with your cooling bill in the summer as well and running the air conditioning all the time. So I have a pin oak here, but we also have scarlet oak. We also have burr oak here at the stores. Any of them will do um, so well for you. And again, just a great shade tree. Don't plant oaks near the home. Um, they are, they will get too big, way too big, um, but do consider planting them out in the yard. We're standing by Liriope or Lily Turf. And what we really love about this plant is it kind of is a grass and a flowering perennial, and they just do such a good job for us in sun or shade. You can really grow them just about anywhere and they fill in like a ground cover does, but more, if you will, the mound clumps and just the clump keeps on getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. Don't get me wrong, not fast growing, not creepy growing, but um, will really fill in spots for you and does a great job of suppressing weeds around trees and, and taller shrubs and so forth. So it, it does a wonderful job. We've got big blue in front. This one is the variegated leaf. Uh, royal purple is here and boy, those flowers are really, really bright and vivid. And then we have silver dragon here. Silver dragon has more of a very, very lavender, light, light, light lavender flower. But look at the foliage. It's just a bright white and green. So really great perennial plant and looks awesome at this time of year. I wanted to show you this flowering onion. And I don't think we've showed it to them before, Taylor. So this is actually serendipity. The reason I wanted to show it to you now at this time of year, because we're in September, is it is in full bloom now. Most of the time your flowering onions are in bloom late April, May, sometimes can uh, kind of trail over to June, but they're usually those spring or early summer bloomers. And look at this, serendipity is beautiful lavender color later in the season. And we're getting some good buzzing around here too. So it's a great pollinator attractant, awesome deer resistance because it's in the onion family. So definitely think about this one. I wanted to uh, give you all a little bit of education on goldenrod or solidago. Um, the reason being is goldenrod always gets this bad wrap out in the gardens or meadows or even the sides of the roads. You'll see goldenrod blooming and everybody always goes, oh, that's ragweed. So just be aware that there is a considerable difference between the two. Goldenrod is another keystone pollinator plant. It is really, really important to the environment. This is little lemon, so it's a compact variety, beautiful fuzzy yellow flowers on top. They're in the aster family. And again, we talk about the asters all the time. They are awesome plants to grow out there in the perennial garden. But goldenrod is going to have those fluffy yellow flowers they can be short, medium, really, really tall um, out there um, in the environment. And golden, or excuse me, the other one, ragweed, has actually um, very cut foliage, kind of ferny foliage on it. It also, when the flowers come out, they're very, very stringy. And they're also a light green. They're not even yellow. They're very, very hard to kind of see the flowers themselves on ragweed. So keep that in mind when you see bright fluffy yellow, that's usually goldenrod and it is doing a great service for us out in the environment. The, they carry obviously a lot of pollen, a ton of nectar. They need pollinators to transport the pollen for them where unfortunately ragweed is a wind pollinated plant. So that's why a lot of us have allergies. Usually late July through August, September, we get a lot of fall allergies because of the ragweed and it's because it is wind pollinated. So keep that in mind. The next time you see a fluffy yellow flower like this, think, yay, it is goldenrod. We're in the annual house. And of course, we've got all of your fall favorites here. Fall mums, obviously remember to plant those as early as you possibly can. So get them in the ground, get them established. You usually need about 68 weeks to get them going and rooted in, okay? Um, I have a video on that, so check that out as well, planting fall mums. Um, but the fall mums are ready to go, all different colors of the rainbow. If you're looking for some thrillers, this is new for us. This is actually an ornamental corn. It's called Field of Dreams, and it's got this purple 
uh, pinky green variegation to it, striping on it. It's so cool, I love it. And then of course, ornamental pepper. So the peppers love September weather because it's so hot during the day. We cool down a little bit more at night, but the heat and the sun during the day, they just really suck it up. And um, we have chili chili and sangria are some of the kind of skinny horn shaped. And then look at these, these guys are a little bit more plump and juicy. The Zamora varieties, orange and yellow. I also have Mambo, red and orange and red and purple. So those are really pretty too. And one of my favorites is black pearl. And if you look closely at black pearl, it has dark, dark, almost black foliage to it. The flowers on it are dark, dark purple, like eggplant purple. And then it will develop its peppers, which start out again, a real shiny, glossy black. And then when they do kind of develop and mature, they kind of turn a, a bright red. So it's such a pretty plant, but awesome. Plant all these together. Um, we still have a ton of annuals, late season annuals, long blooming annuals as well, like lantana and we have a lot of spillers too available. So if you wanna plant ivy out of your um, fall pots and containers, we have, um, golly, what else do we have? Lismachia, Goldilocks, and a bunch of other spillers. So check us out. Definitely uh, beef up your containers and, and your fall plantings with a lot of color. Enjoy.